we're going to listen to our Vice President Biden, who was at, you know, that poor, and, and I feel so sorry for the loss of life of the police officer uh, at uh, or on the uh, MIT campus. I mean, you never know when your life is going to end. And we sometimes take things for granted. The guy was out there doing his job, doing what he was supposed to do, and he died in cold blood. Well, during his funeral last week, Vice President Biden was there, and he told us why these people did what they did. Let's hear Vice President Biden. I get asked, like my colleagues, almost every day since 9-11, why? Why? Why this terrorist phenomenon of the late 20, the 21st, the beginning of the 21st century? Why? People say to me, for they surely know they can never defeat us. They can never overthrow us. They can never occupy us. So why? Why, whether it's Al-Qaeda central out of the Fatah or two twisted, perverted, cowardly knockoff jihadis here in Boston. Why do they do what they do? I've thought about it a lot because I deal with it a lot. And I've come to the conclusion, which is not unique to me, but I do it, they do it to instill fear, fear to have us in the name of our safety and security, jettison what we value most and the world most valuable values about us. Our open society, our system of justice that guarantees freedom, the access of all Americans to opportunity, the free flow of information and people across this country, our transparency. So why did they do it? Biden just told us. You know, we thought George Bush, when he told us that they hate us because of our freedom, that was so stupid. Now he topped it off. Knock off jihadis? What the hell is that? Knock off jihadis? You know, China makes knockoff stuff that they duplicate. So this knockoff jihadi was actually raised in the United States. Jihadi. So he used that. And are we surprised why people think the way they think? Are we surprised? You know, you take these government officials and you take the media, assuming that these Muslims, and put it in your head, Knock off jihadis. He did it because he's a Muslim. Why they hate us? He said he's been thinking about it for a long, long time since 9-11. Why is this terrorist phenomena? Really? You're the vice president of the United States and you don't know why terrorists exist in the world? Try. We made them. Try. We created them. Try, we supported them, we paid for them, we financed them, we trained them, and we still do. Try that. That didn't come across your desk, Mr. Vice President? That did not come across your desk that we created these terrorists out there? We used them? We recycled them? We created Al-Qaeda? We financed Al-Qaeda? We used Al-Qaeda? That's why we bombed the hell out of these countries out there and we don't know why because we are a free society they hate us because we are transparent transparent why don't you be a transparent and tell the American people what's going on why don't you be a transparent and tell them what relationship does the CIA have with, with all of these groups? 
You're wondering, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, and it's taken you since 9-11, about this terrorism phenomena? We created it. We, the United States of America, created it. They don't hate us. We created that hate. That doesn't even exist. See, the, the, the thing is, you go into any Muslim country, you go, into, uh, you go ask people in the streets, what do you think of America? They love America. Everybody wants to come here. If they hate it so much, why are they fighting in the lines to the embassies of the United States? Wanting to come over in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in the Arab countries. They hate us? No. There's nothing about hate. It's all about politics. It's all about imperialist ambitions of what we want to control in the world. We use the same, we cycle the same terrorists in Afghanistan to fight them and kill them so we can tell the American people that we are fighting Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. Then the same people who were fighting in Afghanistan when Libya came around, now we brought them out, financed them, supported them, and they went to fight Gaddafi that we fought, the United States. Then the same people, those who left of them, because many of them died, we sent them to Syria. Thousands of them armed them and sent them into Syria that now, after we use them, after they did what they did, we, the United States of America, supported them. Now, at first we called them the opposition, the rebel, the Syrian rebel, the free Syrian army. Now we're calling them terrorists in Syria, and we don't want these shady terrorists to get hold of the chemical weapons. So now they're bad, but when we sent them in, they were good. That's the same people that we call terrorists. My final message to you is, don't be fooled with what you hear from the government. Don't be fooled and influenced with what you hear on these talking heads on TV, especially if they are spewing hate against Muslims. Because Muslims are not your enemy. Muslims are your neighbors. And I'm sure many of you watching me tonight, you know someone who is a Muslim, and you know they're not bad people. Muslims are Americans. Muslims are Americans who died for America. Muslims are Americans. Muslims are scientists. They're doctors. They're engineers. They build America. Okay, they help. You know, go see NASA. Go see how many Muslim scientists we have to achieve the scientific advances that we have. But you hear the news, every Muslim wants to kill an American. And that is not true. That is not true. Every Muslim fights these terrorists. And if these two brothers, I guarantee you, I have not heard not even one from one single, not even online, not even among uh, the community here or anywhere that anyone, anyone is supporting those two in Boston. If it turned out to be that yes, they did it, but I guarantee you they did not do it because of their Islamic teachings. When you hear something like that, you need, you owe it to yourself to go and research it. What is an Islam that could have made or convinced these two brothers to go and do what they did? You will find that it's actually the opposite. You do not kill children, even at war, not in a marathon, not when you have civilians. Do not kill women. These are the rules of war. These are the Islamic rules of war. You only to go to war to defend yourself. 
Now, I don't think these two were defending themselves or were defending anything. And like I told you, don't, don't forget, where they came from, Chechnya. Chechnya is trying to liberate itself from Russia. Who's helping them? The United States through the CIA and through other countries because they want to influence Russia. They want to have a card in their hand. And like I said, all countries do that. So these people had no reason, none whatsoever, to revenge from the United States. The United States is a friend of Chechnya. So things, it's not adding up. The only thing that, let's leave politics to the politicians. Let's leave criminals to the courts and to the laws and concentrate on our humanity. Not to be influenced by what you hear in the media because the media is driving an agenda. There's an agenda. Zionism would love to see Muslims and Christians at each other's throats. That's how it thrives. That's what they are planning. And the media is pushing that message. Who loses? Everybody at the end, if we listen to them. Anyway, that's very much what we had uh, for you tonight. And uh, hopefully, we, uh, if we decided not to agree or decided to disagree, at least we are deciding that as free society. So it's okay to disagree with each other. All right. Well, you better come here if you want to say good night, and we will see you two weeks from now. Tell them good night. Good night.